Today, Tesla released their brand new, long-awaited new version of their Tesla app. In this video, we're gonna talk about over 12 different changes that I saw between this app and the last version. But before we get started on that, I'll just tell you this. If you're having trouble getting the app to actually update, just delete the app, go back to the app store for either Android or for your Apple device, and just re-download it. You will have to re-log in, you will have to go resync your phone and all that with your car, but hey, it's fine. That's kind of what it takes sometimes if it doesn't update all by itself. Now, let's get into it. All right, so first off, you see a massive change on the interface. As soon as you log into the app, you see that it's got some really great animation and some new buttons to look at. So let's start from the top. First off, the battery percentage that it is charged up in the top left now instead of right dead center in the screen. It shows if it is parked or driving right there. Below that, we now have one more extra quick action button instead of having only three. We now have the ability to control charging from the very front screen there as well. And we have the original frunk open control of the climate and locking of the car. We did not get the trunk open that we wanted in the last video that we talked about, but hey, maybe that'll come in the future. I also realized that you cannot move or change these around, which is something that a lot of people did ask for as well. What they have right there for you is what you're gonna get for now. Below that, we now have the charge limit where we can set it to however much we want the battery to charge anytime the car is charging. And the neat thing about the slider is when you slide it, you actually get taptic feedback, which makes it really nice when it goes on to one of the main different parts, like 70, 60, 50%. It really clicks really nice into there. Underneath that, you have the unlock charge port button or start charging button, which is great because for me, I use a non-Tesla charger and it's just really great to have quick access to that. The one thing I noticed that is actually pretty cool is you can actually see live feedback, live status of different parts of the app without having to go into the page. For example, let's take a look at the climate app down here. You can see it says active, meaning that climate control is on. You can see the interior temperature and you can see that the windows are open. So that's kind of nice without having to actually go into the page. But now let's go into the controls page and watch the animation as I go into it. Pretty cool, huh? So you flip right on top of it and you can see right off the bat it looks very different. Instead of having all the buttons just kind of thrown on a page, you now have a full visual of what's going on with your car. So you can open the front, open the trunk, lock or unlock the car, or you can lock or unlock the char charging port just by tapping on that section of the car. You'll also notice by looking into the top of the front window, you can see that there is actually air blowing out of the front vents. And we're gonna get to that in just a minute, but it's kind of neat because it's uniform across the whole app. If I go into climate and turn that off and then go back into the controls app, you see it is no longer blowing inside of there anymore, which is really cool. Down below, we have the usual quick action buttons such as flash, honk, start, and close. And this is a little bit different because we used to also have the security buttons down there, which we'll get to here in a minute. So I really like this. It's nice and clean, it's really great. And if you swipe left to right, it goes back to the main page and it's just kind of a nice modern touch. So we go into climate and you can see here now we have a much better graphic of the car. It's nice and 3D, it looks really good. And guess what? It's a nice white interior like I have. I am assuming that for those of you guys who do not have the white interior, that it will still be black, but mine turned white, which is really cool because I have white, like I said. And also if you zoom into the little center screen in between the two front seats, you can actually see graphics on it, which is also kind of neat. Now to get it started to turn on your climate control, you just tap on the little vent icon right in the middle of the two seats in the front, and you can see there's that air pouring out of the dash right at your head, super cool. Now you can't adjust where the air is flowing in the direction and all that from the app, but it's still kind of neat. Now, one thing I did also find interesting is that if you tap it again, it doesn't completely turn it off, but instead it toggles it from high to whatever your set temperature in the car is, which I think is totally fine. I think that's really cool. To turn it off, you just come down to the power button in the bottom left-hand corner, tap the power, and it's off. Now, when you go to adjust the seats, it's just like the old one. You tap on the seat to turn it on, and tap on it again to turn it off, and you can adjust the seat just by simply tapping on them. So one thing I noticed too, and I don't know if this is really new or not, but when you turn on the heated seats, it automatically turns on the climate control of the car. Apparently, you can't have a warm butt without also having warm air. 
Now, when you tap on the temperature on the bottom, there's two ways to adjust it. You can use the arrows to the left and right, which also pulls up a slider bar, or you can just tap on the temperature itself and it pulls up the slider bar and you can adjust it that way. You also have the ability to close your windows right here by just tapping close, which is super nice because if you're gonna turn on your AC, you probably don't wanna have your windows open. Swipe left to go back to the main menu. The location page got a few changes as well. Instead of showing you the directions down in the very bottom or the ability to tap on that big button and get directions, now it's all in the top right corner. You have your location, you have the ability to swap from satellite back down to regular just map view as well as you have a button at the top to actually get directions. What we don't have anymore is a button to press to actually show you where your Tesla is. So I'm assuming that that means that it's gonna always open up to where your Tesla is, and then all you have to do is add in your location to bring them all on the same page. So basically they did away with one of the buttons. Now Summon got a whole bunch of new changes, which is really cool. First of all, you can actually open up Summon when your car is plugged in, whereas before it would just simply tell you to first unplug it. And what's most obvious about this is you now have both of the Summon options right here on one page. So you have your go to target right there front and center, which is where you can move away and then have the car go to a certain location. And then you can move it forward and backwards right there as well with those buttons on the very bottom. Now they're all grayed out right now because the car is plugged in and you know that because it says right there under summon, unplug vehicle. Also on the very top, it tells you how far away from your car you are, which is really cool. And right there, you also have the toggle switch for the satellite view versus just regular map view. Security now got its own page. You now have sentry mode, valley mode, and speed limit mode all on one page. You also notice that they got their own new icons and that the clear pin is now blue. So that's kind of a nice touch. When you go into the upgrades tab, you got two different paths you could take. One is software updates, where when you go to that, what it's gonna do is give you the ability to buy anything that's not a subscription. So you can buy the acceleration boost if you wanted, or you can go over to the subscribe tab over here and you can get a subscription, which if you don't have the full South Drive or haven't purchased it outright, you could subscribe to it right there. And as you'll notice all throughout the app, you can go to the Tesla shop right here as well. Let's go to that now. So if we click on accessories, it's gonna give you accessories for the car that you're looking at, such as the Model 3. So you can kind of take a look at some of those. You can come in here and manage your premium connectivity subscription. Services has a few new changes as well. You now have history on its own private tab. It's no longer just up front and center so it looks a lot cleaner if you want to look at the history you can just tap on it and you can go back through it you can also filter through it and see the diverted canceled or delivered type of history you can do service centers mobile service you can kind of filter through all the different types to see really what you want to see of your history hopefully you don't have so much history though that you actually need to filter it you also have your video guides in here that goes through all the different parts of the tesla giving you some tutorials although i highly recommend going through the cf tesla ones of course and when you click on select service, what you're gonna find is an animation that pops up giving you anything you might need for your actual service, which is kind of nice. It's just kind of a nice animation, nice modern touch to it as you tap on things. It's just kind of updates and just kind of a fun way to use it. And this is also in the roadside service as well. Watch what happens as we go through here and pretend we have a flat tire. So obviously it pops up at the bottom, animates it versus it just being on the screen, it slides up. You go to flat tire, tires and wheels, you hit done. They always want a description, so we just put tires on this one here. Okay, we hit next. And here's what's really cool. Now you can click and say what tires actually pop. You can say these two tires are flat and hit next. And now it's gonna show exactly where my location is. It's gonna let them know exactly where my car's at. Now in the top right corner, the profiles actually had quite a bit of updating itself as well. You can see all your different cars in there and what their charge percentage is. Me with the Model Y, I haven't purchased it yet, so it's just showing me my reference number. And of course, we have access to the Tesla shop. In the inbox looks about the same. The loot box has a little bit of a new touch to it. You now have a nice picture at the very top, making it a little bit more modern, a little more friendly looking, but pretty much everything else is the same. Under notifications, you can go in here to their new notification screen and tap on a few different things you wanna be notified on, which is kinda nice. We've always had the ability to do that, but it just looks a little more modern. So there's a lot of really great stuff they've added to the app. A lot of new design features, a lot of animation. I mean, basically the app does everything it always did. It just does it now more efficiently, a little funner. We didn't exactly get everything we asked for, of course. In our last video, we really wanted to have the ability to view our cameras from the app. If we got a center view alert, we'd like that to pop up on our screen, let us know someone's messing with our car, not just the alarm, but sentry alert. Someone walks past your car, that sort of thing. 
and then have the ability to go and turn on live stream to those cameras. Now, I know that's a big ask and a lot of people want it, but we didn't really figure we we're gonna get it with this update. So now let me know down below in the description what you think of this app and what are some things that you'd like to see in the next software update. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.